Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, part one of the $2,000 high-end gaming computer build featuring the i7-8700K and the GTX 1080 Ti. This is the Cadillac build, the premium top tier best of the best gaming machine. In this video series, I'm going to go over all the parts. I'm going to do a detailed why vlog talking about their pros and cons and alternatives you might consider. I will do a full build with the camera overhead step by step so you can follow along and then performance benchmark testing and so on. Please be sure you're subscribed to my channel using the big red button directly below so you get updates when the future videos come out. They will come fairly soon. This computer is for somebody who is looking for a deluxe premium experience. You don't have to spend $2,000 just to play a few games, but if you want ultra detail, if you want high resolution, if you want high frame rates, this actually is quite reasonable, as I'll show you in the benchmarks in future videos. All of the parts that I'm putting into this $2,000 computer will be linked in the video description below to both Amazon and Newegg. Sometimes Amazon's cheaper, sometimes Newegg's cheaper. Be sure to compare prices between both and buy it where it makes the most sense to you. There will also be two alternative builds down there, $1,500 and $2,500. Do you want to go super deluxe? I'm going to show you some things you can add to make it a more enriched experience for $2,500. And then I'll take a few things out to cut it down to the $1,500 price point if you still want close to the Cadillac experience, perhaps on a Buick budget. Also linked in the video description will be my links to Patreon and to Twitch. I live stream on Twitch currently on an i7-4790K. This computer is going to replace the 4790K, and in the part two the Y vlog, I'll go into detail about why this is replacing it and who should keep a 4790K versus who should consider building or upgrading to this. Now, the link to Patreon supports me. If you want to become one of my patrons, I would greatly appreciate it. I do get some support from computer companies when they send me things. For example, the case, power supply, and cooler were provided by Cooler Master. This motherboard was provided by MSI. Nothing else was provided. I bought that CPU. It is a retail chip. The RAM, the SSDs, and this video card was purchased by myself. MSI sent me the Duke, which is in my Skylake X system. I had to buy the Gaming X because they only send out so many things. So if you'd like to see more build videos on my channel, your direct support as a patron would definitely help. And all of the money raised on Patreon goes directly to buy things to review for the channel. Thank you. As I go over each of the parts in this build, I'm going to talk about what benefit they provide and why they're included. I am not in this video going to talk about the alternatives and pros and cons. That's for the why vlog. That video is much, much longer. Instead, I'm going to focus about what's in this build rather than what's not. First up, we have our CPU choice, the i7-8700K 6-core 12-thread Coffee Lake processor. The K-chip is overclockable, and this is what's going to provide us with our premium gaming experience, along with the video card, of course. It does come out of the box at 4.3 GHz on all six cores, but it turbos up to 4.7. We are going to overclock it not to worry. 5 GHz is the goal with this. At 5 GHz fixed clock speed on all six cores, you're going to be getting that 144 to 165 frame per second gaming experience at lower resolutions or the ultra detailed gaming experience at higher resolutions with good frame rates. It is also an excellent content creation CPU. I know a lot of people look at Ryzen, we'll talk about in the Y vlog, but if you want to edit either 4K video or even 1080p video, if you want to do 3D animation, if you want to do other types of content creation, perhaps run virtual machines and do other things besides gaming, at 5 gigahertz, these six cores are incredibly quick and it will do that just fine. In December of 2017, the i7-8700K is full stop the fastest gaming CPU in the world. If you want the best, you have come to the right place. Moving on to our motherboard, the MSI Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon AC motherboard. AC Wi-Fi is included, RGB lighting, DDR4 4000 support. It comfortably runs that CPU at 5 gigahertz. I know because I've already had this on the test bench. This, this has been used actually for all of the launch benchmarks for the i7-8700K on my channel. NVMe support, a great audio chip, the Realtek ALC1220. For just under $200, it is a premium gaming board with great, great features. Now, there are plenty of other motherboards to consider, all of which I'll discuss in part two, the Y-Vlog. But if you want a good motherboard, this would be a very good choice. 
To cool this awesome CPU, we need an awesome cooler. Now, the K-chips don't come with a cooler, which is why the Cooler Master Master Air Maker 8, that's a mouthful, say it three times fast, is what we're going to be putting on here. Now, that is not a small, and it's not inexpensive. It is over $100, but... It is a premium top tier cooler. I've not actually used it yet. I have used the $90 tower coolers and I've used lots of liquid coolers. So this build will be my first time using it. I will also compare the cooling performance of that to say 240 and 280 millimeter liquid coolers later on in this video series. There are pros and cons to each again, which I'll talk about in the Y vlog. For system memory, 16 gigabytes is absolutely the minimum amount of RAM that you want to put together in this system. We'll talk about the possible benefits of 32 gigabytes in the next video, but 16 gigabytes of Trident Z DDR4-3200 is sort of the sweet spot of price to performance. Yes, you can go faster. It does not do a lot for the average gamer. Uh, certain content creators and whatnot are benefiting from faster RAM, but 3200 is the sweet spot to price to performance. We have two solid state drives in this build. The first is the Samsung 960 Evo NVMe solid state drive, 250 gigabytes. This is our boot drive. Windows and all of our non-gaming programs will be installed on this. Wicked fast boot times. We're talking five seconds to the login screen, less than 10 seconds to the Windows desktop from a cold boot. That is really good. Now the Samsung 850 Evo is not quite as fast as this, but for its price, about $150 for 500 gigs provides us enough room to install most of our games that we run on a regular basis. Sure, you can't put a massive Steam library on there, but for the kind of games that you run most often, you can fit a half a dozen games on there just fine, and they will run much quicker, load save games, save your games, launch, close down, and update much faster than they will on a hard drive. I would like to point out there is no hard drive in this build, and I will not be putting one in later. I've not budgeted one, and there will not be one installed. In 2017, going into 2018, if you're building a $2,000 machine, your programs and games should all be run off of SSDs. Now, I understand some people say, well, I need a hard drive for storage. That's fine. You can add a hard drive if you want to put your movies and pictures and personal files and backups on a hard drive. That's fine. I do all mine remotely over the network, so I'm not putting a hard drive in, but if you need one, Two terabytes doesn't cost very much, $70 or so. That leads us to our graphics card. If you are building a $2,000 computer, if you're getting an i7-8700K overclocked to 5 gigahertz, it begins and ends at the 1080 Ti. I know some people are going to say, but, but do I really need that much? Can't I get a GTX 1070? What about RX Vega? I'll talk about those comparisons in the Y vlog, but let me give you the short and sweet version. If you're spending $2,000 on a premium Cadillac computer build, if you're putting in these quality components and these quality components, don't get cheap on your video card. The rest of it does not make sense unless you're putting a top tier card in. The GTX 1080 Ti is a wonderful card for 4K gaming at 60 frames per second, 1440p gaming at 100 frames per second, or 1080p gaming at 144 frames per second at high to ultra detail depending upon the game. Anything less than this won't accomplish those goals. I know it's a lot, but it's worth it. Now we need a case to put all of this awesomeness in. The Cooler Master Master Case Pro 6 is a very, very nice case. It retails for $150, although you can often find it on sale. That's what the links down below are for. It is a very nice case with good ventilation and cooler mounting options. There's room on the top, the back, and the front in order to install various radiators. It has enough room for most large tower coolers. It has a nice side window, and it's got good drive installation options. It is a mint tower case that's very well made made. Now, in the part two Y vlog, I'm going to talk about a lot of alternatives. You can, there's so many possible case choices out there. And I, of course, I won't even be able to cover them all in part two. What I will talk about is why you should not put all of this goodness in a $50 to $70 case. $100 would be my minimum budget for a case for this level of system. More about that in part two. Finally, last but not least, our power supply, Cooler Masters V75 80 plus gold certified fully modular power supply. That is a very quiet, very power efficient power, power supply that makes cable management very easy because it's fully modular. Every cable is disconnected, so you just install the cables that you need. Again, I'll talk about alternatives during the Y vlog, but let me just say that 750 is a nice number if you want to save electricity while you're gaming for extended sessions. You don't need 750 watts to drive all this computer gear. In fact, 500 watts would be enough. 
Normal gaming load, you're looking at about 350 watts total power draw for all the hardware that you see here, even overclocked to five gigahertz. Yes, really, it doesn't pull that much power. But if you pull power supply to 80 to 90% of its draw, it loses efficiency. That 80 plus gold rating is for the middle band of its power draw, not the 20% on either extreme. So if you spend a bit more and get a slightly higher rated power supply and you run in the middle of its power band, you do get a little bit more efficient. Now that is all the parts that are included in the $2,000 budget. There will be a few minor changes once I actually set it up for myself. Again, I'll detail those in the Y vlog, but let me just emphasize here and now, custom PCs are custom. It's your computer, build it your way. If you prefer a different brand of video card, a different brand of motherboard, a different case, that's fine. This is a suggested build with a quality level of components that go well together. You're putting together a nice balanced premium build that will give you years and years of wonderful experience. Minor changes and tweaks to satisfy personal preference are just fine. What I wouldn't do is put wildly different components together. Don't put this stuff in a $50 case. Don't get a 200R case and buy budget parts. Make a nice balanced system with similar components. As a general rule, that will get you a much better overall experience than if you mismatch parts. Finally, I want to address the last point, the Cadillac part of this build, $2,000. Now, inevitably, somebody's going to say, oh, come on, you don't really need to spend $2,000 to play some computer games. And you are exactly correct. You don't. But this is the deluxe Cadillac experience. The Chevy experience for $1,000 will play all current games at 1080p, high detail, 60 frames per second without any issue whatsoever. But it won't play them at 4K. It won't play them at 1440p at 100 frames per second. And it certainly won't play them at 1080p, very high detail at 144 frames per second this will and that's the difference this is for the premium experience with many years of great use ahead of it it does cost more to get that experience on my channel is a 1200 dollars ryzen 5 1600 build where i even provided an 800 dollars sub uh, build version of that computer if you don't want to spend this kind of money there's nothing wrong with spending less if you don't have it this is not necessarily the deal for price to performance you are paying a premium to get the best but if you want the best you've come to it. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, please do me the favor, when you go shopping, use those links to Amazon and Newegg down in the video description below. As I said, there will be three different suggested builds down there at the $1,500, $2,000, and $2,500 price point. I'll talk more about those in part two of the video, but all of those links will be down there. Please use those when shopping. It's very appreciative. Links to Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon will be down there as well. Please follow and support as you are able. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.